Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back. So this is my submission to the Design a Monster contest on the official Monster Super League Facebook. Now I know this might not really be helpful to anyone, but I wanted to share this with you guys because, you know, I'm just feeling really proud that I put a lot of hard work into this. The whole time I've been designing and drawing this monster, I just kept thinking that maybe if I did a good enough job or if I win or something like that, they might actually put this monster in the game. So it kind of kept me really motivated. So I present to you guys the Nat5 Nura. And here's how I came up with the design. If you take a look at the 3 star, 4 star, 5 star monsters in the game, you'll start seeing a pattern in their monster design. Most of the 3 stars and below monsters are based off of animals and plants, basically things you would see in Pokemon. Stuff like Monkikis, Beth, Cocos, July, and other plants like Seedlers. For 4 stars, most of these monsters are actually based off of mythological creatures. Things such as Succubus, Vampires, Banshees, or Suras. For Nat 5s, most of these monsters are based off of named deities or heroes. For example, Arthur and Siegfried are legendary heroes, and Persephone, Odin, Indra, Shiva are gods. So following this pattern, I based my design off of the legendary yokai Nurarian. If you're a fan of manga or anime, you've probably seen them somewhere. There was an anime a while ago called Nurarian no Mako, which is an anime about fighting and involves yokais and stuff. In other works, he's also shown to be some sort of last boss character as well. You'll see this in Gantz, or like the comic Wayward. The Nurarian, or translated to Slippery Gourd, is the personification of the saying, appearances can be deceiving. Appearance-wise, he is just a regular old man that acts in a quiet, gentleman-like fashion. He dresses in expensive clothing, usually a fine silk kimono. The only obvious defining feature of the Nurarian is his long, gourd-shaped head. The reason why I say his appearances are deceiving is because he is actually the supreme commander of all yokai. Yokai describes monsters, demons, spirits of all sorts. So with that being said, I definitely think a monster like this, if introduced to the game, should definitely be a Nat 5. Now the second thing I did in terms of monster design is follow something that the developers have been doing quite a lot in their recent monsters. And that, obviously, is gender bending. I mean, if you can gender bend the All-Father into the All-Mother, I think I would be justified in gender bending this old man into, let's say, a cute anime girl. So here I present my evil one, Nura. I decided to copy something that they did in Nuraria no Mako, which is to use hair to represent the long gourd-shaped head. I also changed the kimono to a yukata because I wanted it to be short and skirt-like. Now, another really cool idea I came up with is, in Monster Super League, we never actually had a concept of a monster controlling another monster. So I thought if the Nura was to be the commander of all monsters, it would be really really cool if she had minions that did her bidding. These minions would also evolve with her and transform as well when she evolves. I didn't simply just choose three yokais to be her minions, I had to carefully plan them based on their potential evolution forms. Her first minion is the Oni. It's basically the Japanese version of an ogre. I thought it would be really cool to use an oni because I wanted to do something with the oni mask when they evolve. The second one I chose is a Kasa Obake, which is basically an umbrella monster. Pretty much the only reason I chose this was because I needed something long and can turn into a weapon. The third one I chose is a Kirin. Now this is something that I really really liked, but in all honesty it doesn't actually fit the character that well. Appearance-wise, the Kirin is basically a cross between a horse and a dragon. And you'll see them in Chinese art quite a lot, as they are symbols of extreme good luck. The Kirin are also very powerful creatures in their own right, comparable to minor deities. So lore-wise, I was a little bit iffy about using him as a pet for the Nura. But in the end, I still decided on it because, let's face it, he's really, really damn cool. So there's also one really important thing that we absolutely cannot forget when designing a female character in a video game, and that is obviously sex appeal. And in this case, it's the Zetai Ryoiki, also known as Absolute Territory, which is basically the area of skin shown between the skirt and the knee-high socks. She actually keeps this for all her evolution forms. I mean, I had to do it. Had to boost her Moe level up a bit. I didn't change her appearance too much in her Evil 2 form, besides adding a few accessories that she didn't have before. The biggest change is definitely to the Oni and Kirin. They pretty much grew up and became really huge. Since the most defining feature of the Nurarian is his long head, I decided to make her hair longer whenever she evolves. You know, kind of like in Dragon Ball Z, when they power up, going from Super Saiyan to Super Saiyan 2 and 3. In her Evil 3 and final form, everything comes together and produces the final result. I had the Kasa Obake turn into one of those umbrella swords, with his tongue being the blade. The Oni turns into an Oni mask slash armor slash shield. 
The Kirin also reaches maturity and takes his final form. I think the design of this character is greatly inspired by Bishamon Ten from the Noragami anime. Bishamon Ten is the god of war and warriors. Wait, wrong picture. Here we go. You like that, don't you, you fucking weeb? Turns out 433 and I aren't the only ones gender bending. In the anime, the servants of gods physically become their weapons. Bishamon Ten being the god of war obviously has an array of weapons. In the anime, you see her riding a line during battle. And that's where I got the inspiration of having the Nora being mounted. The hair ornament on her head resembles that of a samurai general's helmet. And the samurai banner on her back has the kanji for fear written on it. A little something I took from Nuraria no Mako. Her first skill is called Gank. I picture the animation like her commanding her minions to go in and attack. In the Evil 1 stage, they all rush in. In the Evil 2 stage, the Oni rides in on the Kirin and she chucks the umbrella at the enemy. In the Evil 3 stage, she would go in herself and attack with her sword. Her active skill is called Night Parade. This is based off of the legend of the Night Parade of a Hundred Demons. Based on legend, every year during summertime, the Nunarian leads all the yokai to roam the streets of Japan in a festival known as the Parade of a Hundred Demons. So I wanted this to be an AoE skill, with the visuals looking like a bunch of random monsters running and stampeding through the enemy. So with the variant lead, I decided to go with Death Blow, mainly because there are no Nat 5s in the game that currently have this skill. So here we have the Fire Nura. She's a balance type monster with even stat distribution. She has an 80% 3 turn attack down on her first skill. Now you might think this is a little bit broken, but this is only slightly better than a light Loki's first skill. Her second skill is Courageous Strike, which makes her really good for titans. There currently aren't too many strong monsters in the fire element for titans, so I think she's going to be a great addition to the game. It's also really nice that she's a balance type, because she's a cross between a damage dealer and a utility monster. For the water Nura, I decided to make her a defender type. Although much of her stats is going into defense, she actually has pretty balanced stats overall. Her 3 star skill is a team morale boost of 20%, similar to the Light Persephone. Her 5 star skill is an AoE silence with an 80% chance to silence for 2 turns. I mainly plan her to be a utility tank for PvP defense. The Wood Nura is an attacker type. Now, because of balance reasons, I didn't make her stat distribution all that good. With her 3 star skill, I'm introducing a new mechanic to the game called Execution. Execution's effect instantly kills any target under 20% health. The effect applies after the damage of the skill is dealt. For boss monsters, such as golems, dragons, starstones, and tower of chaos bosses. The effect applies at 10%, and the effect applies at 5% for titans. For her 5 star skill, I decided to give her elemental edge, basically to make her more of a versatile attacker. The light Nura is a tank type monster, with a healthy amount of HP and relatively high defense. Her 3 star skill makes her an HP aggressor. For her 5 star skill, I decided to throw in execution again, this time with a spin. Her execution will only activate on critical hits. This definitely balances her out a bit, as she is light type and does not benefit too much from stacking a lot of crit rate. If you were to use a crit rate gem on her instead of triple HP, you would lose on, on the potential damage of HP aggression and also extra tankiness, making this monster extremely hard to gem. The Dark Nero is also a balanced type monster with slightly higher stat distribution to HP. Her 3 star skill is a unique version of Battle Rush. Her Battle Rush restores allies HP in accordance to 5% of her max HP, and also restores allies SP by 10%. Her 5 star skill is also a unique unique version of a 5 star adrenaline. On critical hits, it restores her own HP by 15%. Against 4 units, she would be healing for 60% of her max HP, so I decided to cripple her a bit by adding that critical hit requirement on her 5 star skill. She will be healing 15% for each critical hit she makes, so that means if she were to only crit on 2 units, she would only heal for 30%. The last thing I wanted to talk about is actually for implementing her into the game. I think it would be really cool if she was to be obtainable through doing PvP. Similar to how Siegfrieds are per purchasable through guild points. It would be really cool if she was purchasable through the Astromon League tokens. Even if she was to be extremely expensive, it would still be great. It would give players a real incentive to focus on Astromon League, rather than some bonus Astro gems that are easily farmable. But yeah, these are just some of my ideas. Well, that about wraps up my introduction to the monster I created. If you guys are interested, the link to all the images are in the description below. I also spent quite a bit of time writing the story for each of her elements and evolutions, and I think I did a pretty good job, so be sure to read those as well. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.